Rwanda, in a farcical war of words between Priti Patel and people traffickers, where crooks have told their human cargo that the Rwandan threat is pure rubbish, while the Home Office says the first few migrants are about to be put on planes. All the usual characters are bending their sinews to stop it from happening anyway. Immigration lawyers, rights organisations, posh bleeding heart students and charities, and of course parliamentary committees who absolutely do not want this plan to take off and certainly not a single flight. So will it happen or will it all just be a plan in tatters where at least the government can blame everyone else but themselves? And even if it does take place, will the migrants stay put or just recommence the arduous journey back to Europe? Well, let's talk to GB News Home and Security Editor Mark White first. Mark, you've been following the Home Affairs Select Committee today, which has been giving the Migration Minister a grilling on this. Yeah, this is uh, Tom Glove. He is the a minister who is in charge of uh, trying to tackle illegal immigration and he was giving his first uh, comments really since confirmation from the Home Office that the first group of asylum seekers who are supposedly going to be heading soon uh, to Rwanda have been informed of that Home Office decision. Now, it's by no means certain that they will be heading there any time uh, very soon because we're expecting that there will be a raft of legal challenges that are launched by a number of individuals, asylum seekers and associated uh, campaign groups and charities. So uh, watch this space for what happens in the coming days. But Tom Persglove, anyway, talking to the Home Affairs Select Committee, uh, said that he believed, OK, it wasn't a panacea, uh, that in isolation the Rwandan policy would not end the small boat crisis in the channel and indeed uh, the crisis also involving those who are still regularly smuggled uh, over the English Channel or under the English Channel in lorries. Um, so those though that uh, are going to be sent to Rwanda, he believes that will act as a, a deterrent in conjunction with other measures that the government is going to come up with. Now, interestingly, he was asked by Diane Abbott, uh, one of the committee members, about a situation that we've not heard no, an awful lot about, and that is the, the situation involving Rwanda and Israel uh, in 2014, uh, between 2014 and 2017, some 4,000 Failed asylum seekers were sent to uh, Rwanda there to be uh, apparently assimilated into that society. Uh, but of the 4,000 who were sent there, we're told that only nine uh, come 2018 remained in place. They had cited uh, difficulties with the language, the culture, a complete lack of jobs, uh, and so drifted off back into uh, either other parts of Africa or into Europe uh, to try to head back up to northern Europe again. Uh, as far as that uh, policy is concerned, well, Tom Persglove told the committee uh, that he believed that the system uh, that the British government had agreed with Rwanda was going to be a system that would work because it is a system that also has at its heart economic development, which would allow for those asylum seekers to be better integrated uh, into Rwanda. This is what he told the committee. This is about providing opportunity in Rwanda for people to have prosperous and successful lives where that sanctuary is provided, where protection is provided in Rwanda for those who seek it and that there is support around skills, that there is support around jobs, um, and that there is support around integration and capacity building. That is, that is entirely why the, this policy has been developed in the way that it has, to make sure that people are able to have that longer-term sanctuary if that is what they themselves wish to have.